everyone. We're live for day two of our illustration stream here in San Francisco with Logan Ferber. I'm Ari. We had such a great day yesterday. Logan illustrated some characters from... Um, Black Panther? Oh, God, I have blanked. Black Panther. It was really cool. We were on Photoshop, and today we have a whole new thing for you. Um, Logan, how did you feel about yesterday? Are you excited for day two? I am. Yesterday was a lot of fun. It was great meeting everyone and being able to answer questions they had. It's totally. a good way to wake up, get the energies going for the creative day. Yeah. So I'm excited. So today we're going to do a whole different project. But before we go into it, a lot of you asked to see Logan's sketchbook. So we're going to show you deep into Logan's mind, what he sketches on a day-to-day -day basis on his little sketchbook that he takes with him everywhere. So before we show that, let's see who's joining. Hi everyone, Phoenix is back. Daniel, Phoenix again, made it to day two. <laughs> yes, we all made it. JC, Frank, let us know where you're from. I'm from San Francisco and Athens, Greece. Logan is from, from San Francisco slash Rhode Island. Slash Rhode Island. So anyone in Rhode Island or Massachusetts, we had a lot of people yesterday who happened to be from like really close by where Logan has lived. So let us know. We want to hear from all over the world. Hi from India. Texas, Miami. Miami. And we have a lot more going on. So keep tuning in. At 11 a.m. we have Kirk Wallace right after us. So um, that's going to be hosted by Kathleen. Then we have Lydia Lukianova at 1 p.m. And then Mark Uzmiani at 3 p.m. Those are all Pacific time. So if you just sit yourself in front of your computer and watch, you're going to have the best day ever. There's going to be so many giveaways. There's a challenge today. So check out the challenge tab on the right hand side above the chat dialogue and you'll see we have a Lunar New Year challenge and we can't wait to see who's going to submit today. Best so, be the best Lunar New Year yes. of all the Lunar New Years. And Logan's going to be looking at your illustrations and he'll be picking a winner for this stream today. And then we'll have another one tomorrow. It's just going to keep going. It's going to be amazing. And it's Photoshop or Illustrator, right? Yes, you can use Photoshop or Illustrator for the challenge. but. Please use the template that we provide. That's the criterion for submitting. Okay, so should we look at your sketchbook? Sure. Just get started by Let's flipping through flip my most through recent there. sketchbook, which is, I have a newer one, but this one's kind of filled up enough that it's worth seeing. So, yeah. wow. using this GoPro. This That's is a, awesome. oh, it's flipped. It's upside down, so oh, just no. show it that way. Okay, yeah. cool. Just like, they're looking at it like we're looking at it. Good to know. The, uh, <laughs> so this was a Yosemite sketch, showcasing kind of how I take it everywhere, including national parks. And I just keep it in my backpack at all times. So between hikes, could just sit down in the field and kind of do a quick, kind of like five to 10 minute sketch to just pump it out and then go back out. What kind of, are you using pens or pencils? Oh yeah, for uh, this one, it was a uh, India ink brush pen. That was a Pentel pen. And so I could do the quick lines and then the little gray areas for the details on the clouds I was just kind of watering that same pen down. And so we could just kind of get some quick value. When you say watering, do you mean water? Yeah, I would actually use like water from the stream. To just kind of like <gasps> dip and loosen it. Wow, yeah. you became one with nature. I've also used wine before and just like had a glass of wine and like dip that and draw Water it. Water and but wine. No. Wow. Not blood and wine. I did not expect you to say you got water from the stream. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Um, I just want to call out because we have a lot of different countries right now. Hey from France, Des, Luis from Argentina, Simon from Colombia, Irun from Norway. Um, me, hi Milan, hi Gabriel from Nigeria, Uzman is also from Nigeria, Luali's from Morocco, wow. Oh, Yizu says wine is expensive. So is oil paint. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> However, um, wine is better for you than oil paint, so. Yes, you don't have those fumes. No. Jimmy also asked if he designed some of your tattoos. Um, I actually designed this one on my left arm, which is the first tattoo I got when I was 18. And I drew it on with Sharpie in a mirror when I was at college and was like, all right, 
I'm gonna commit to this like full arm thing. And then since then, wow, I've just helped direct, but I didn't want to design anymore. I sort of like having an idea, bring it to the artist that I like. I always have like a long kind of like coffee talk with them to see if I like them as a person before they do tattoos. And then we totally. can collaborate. And so I like them all. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the next thing in your sketch. Turn the page. Look at these guys. So these are just quick sketches in like a situation of being in an airport or just kind of on a train, anywhere where I just sort of have to pass the time. So thus they're not really complete in any way and just quick ideas I could throw down. And this guy on the left is sort of the beginning of what we'll get into later today, which is I got really into just manipulating, exploding organic objects and now I'm getting into non-organic objects because it starts getting into this like abstract painting realm, but it comes mm -hmm. from a cartoon-like perspective. And the other guy's just a character design, but. That's so cool. Patricia says, I love that you date your sketches. I try to as much as I can because one day I'll forget and it'll yeah. just be nice to see where I progress from. Definitely. Okay, next. next. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Daryl says, do you get people come up and watch over your shoulder when you're sketching? Yeah, it depends on, I try to set up in a position where I don't have that issue. Um, in a plane, it's kind of unavoidable because someone will be either to your right or left or whatever. Um, or if you're like in a park, because I used to draw in Harvard Square when I was living there, because there would just be people outside performing and stuff all the time. So you could kind of hide behind a crowd and do it. But as soon as that one person catches on, you sort of have to like relocate. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's they don't mean any harm. They're like just complimenting the work. But I have had one situation where they're like, wait, are you drawing me? And you're like, oh, no. And then just <laughs> had to like run. So stuff like that will happen. But it's sort of just goofy. Yeah. That's that's rad. Has security guards stopped me in a mall once from drawing the mall? What? Yeah. I don't know why. That means that you were drawing it so faithfully that they were like, they're like sabotage. afraid you were going to steal the architectural yeah, design or something. Kind of. <laughs> that was his excuse anyway. Yeah. Um, so then here is just some, I think I did this radish uh, when I was camping in Oregon at one point. Just, I was sort of just trying to do like one quick sketch in the morning each day. So I ended up doing this little guy, which also kind of gets into where we'll be going, which is uh, a lot of the early exploding things I started doing were fruits or vegetables because I thought they all kind of had personalities and I love eating them and that's kind of sad, weird combo. Um, and then the one on the right was hiking in Marin. It was just a quick kind of sketch of the hills and how it was cloudy because it had rained for like the first time in California in a long time. So. And this is, uh, this one was done with an actual, both of these were done with physical brushes. So I had like an ink with me. And so wow. it's like a fatter brush so you can kind of get these like dry textures in places. Thomas says, it's pretty rad. And Peter <laughs> says, so punny. Perfect. <laughs> Everyone loves puns. Everyone loves puns, including oh. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. It's like a very evil Captain Crunch. Whoa. Um, I was eating Captain Crunch at the time, so I wanted to do a darker, more sadistic looking Captain Crunch <laughs> because he does drive boats through people's walls like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> um, he does. And then the one on the right is just like my weird Hufflepuff Kanye because we were talking about what different groups of people would be in what category of Harry Potter. And I thought Kanye was totally a Hufflepuff. Totally. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, what is, where are the Hufflepuff elements here? Um, sort of just like these goofy glasses, which are the Kanye glasses, but with like flair. And then he's used his mic wand to make a crown for himself. Nice. He looks very happy in his <laughs> outfit. I'd be. That's like, if I wasn't um, a Ravenclaw, I might be a Hufflepuff. Yeah. But I'm Ravenclaw. I think I'm supposed to be a Ravenclaw too. Okay. Is, are those one. the smart ones? They're the like, Gryffindor's like, we're the best and we're proud of yeah. ourselves. And then everyone yeah. thinks they're Gryffindor and then you realize you're not Gryffindor. Cause they're <laughs> just like brave, but stupidly brave people. Like I can defeat everything. They're Harvard like, students, no. which is why the colors are 
pervert-y, mm, essentially. I see. Um, okay, so for those of you who are joining right now, we're looking through Logan's sketchbook and seeing the things that he sketches on the little book he carries around with him. And we're also talking about Harry Potter houses. Uh, this is just a bouncer cat. <laughs> Ooh, like at a club? I, yeah, like but like an old kind of saloon club. Whoa. Uh, and nothing shows intimidation it's like cracking your paws. No, not at all. So, That's yeah, so awesome. the, I try to do pencils uh, more often, but then they get all smudgy. So then I get scared of doing pencils on both pages because when I used to do that, they'd eventually just go away forever. Oh, yeah. So, or they'd like look like a mess and if Can I don't have fixative. Can you spray it with something? Oh, a fixative. Yeah. Because in college, we would use charcoal all the time for like all the things. But then if you just went out into the wind, the whole thing would blow away. Both the paper and the charcoal. So yeah. like, have to spray it all the fixative, but then you're just chemically destroying your lungs by ingesting all this fixative. So now if I go in, on the East Coast, all those old drawings are just under my bed. So if I go like to get them under the bed, you can still kind of smell fixative. Mm. It like never goes away, truly. Whoa. Nadia uh, says hairspray. Hairspray does also work. I yeah. also saw you mentioned wizard, and thank you. I would love <laughs> to be a wizard if I wasn't an artist. Daryl says, do you keep another sketchbook which is just used for practice and drawing fundamentals? Um, I try to have one sketchbook that's like, I'll carry everywhere for doing these kind of drawings, and then I'll have one that I'll do for like, if I want to do hand studies or figure studies. Um, and if I don't have a sketchbook at the time, I'll just have like a stack of papers I can pull from, like one of those 11 by 14 kind of Bristol board stacks. Um, and now since everything's digital, I'll do some sketches there to do quick character studies or whatnot. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I used to do that when uh, I was in Chicago. I was part of one of those figure drawing classes. So I would take that sketchbook to the figure drawing class as opposed to this one. Jose says, really inspirational creatures living in Logan's sketchbook. I know, right? It's like uh, the borrowers. Yeah, it's like I imagine an animation where they all come to life out of the book. <laughs> and the cat bouncer and Kanye are like Just fighting. hanging out. It's like Toy Story. Oh, I thought they were going to be fighting. Oh, they could. Like verbally. Yeah. Not physically. The cat might physically. Yeah. Kanye would just say something and then the cat would take it personally. <laughs> um... I don't entirely remember what this left side page is. <laughs> like, it's a start of a sketch, and then something came up where I had to go, and I just called it because it was like drawing from a piece of nature somewhere. And I was just getting really into the details, but since then, now I have no idea. Um, but the one on the right was looking at this same stick that the left one is, and then trying to manipulate it into having a face because the knots and such in it kind of portrayed this bird-like lizard creature. They Whoa. do not appear in my dreams, but that would be both scary and awesome. <laughs> That's cool. I like how you use the lines, even here, too. Thanks. Yeah, this, uh, this is more of a showcase of how the sketches might look for a client project. So this was for a poster series. If you saw those McDonald posters that came out a while ago that were for the different dipping sauces, hmm. These are some sketches for that project because I was working with the company that was doing those prints because those that was the company that I ended up working at in Chicago. Oh, so they cool. reached out to me again. Um, but I ended up doing the spicy buffalo one, and these are two that were too scary for McDonald's, but <laughs> I liked them. Do you? So did they end up going with one of your sketches? Um, ultimately, I sort of just passed it off because all the ones I ended up doing, they were like, uh, so daring. I ended up just giving it to Billy, who works at Delicious, who went through with it. Um, but yeah, this this is kind of how I approach all my poster work too. Is like laying out generally this kind of thing, which is like this is where the extra text will go. Or mm -hmm. so is this the first time you sketched this out, or were there previous? No, this is the ones? first one. Pretty nice for the first one. Yeah, it's. I'll probably spend. 15 to 20 minutes sketching these or something. Patricia doesn't see signs of an eraser. Um, you kind of just go over stuff. Yeah, I tend to just go over stuff if it's a sketch because it doesn't matter all that much. On the final one, I'll absolutely erase all the time. But yeah. for these, it's 
fine. <laughs> yeah, they still look great without erasing. These are just uh, head sketches of, if you know Sherry from uh, Isley, the one on the left was a drawing of her for a commission piece, and then the girl on the right was a friend who had contacted me to do a piece with the two of them in it. So I did a painting of this eventually, but these oh. were like head studies of the two of them to see what kind of style the two of them would match as. Um, nice. Again, good with the dates. Yeah, very good. Remind me when I did that painting, because <laughs> once I give it away, I don't have access to it anymore, so. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining. We have so many new people. If you're just joining now, we're here live with Logan Ferber. This is day two, and yesterday a lot of you asked to see his sketchbook. So we're showing you his sketches before we go into the iPad and Illustrator to show the project for today. Mm -hmm. So let's look maybe another two minutes or sure. another couple pages. If there's something special you want to show. Yeah, the uh, this is a more rough version of the composition. Oh, it's upside down. Uh, a more rough version of the composition of mm -hmm. that poster that eventually we can was. There we go. This. Um, just to see how the two of them would fit into a space for the painting. And these are extremely rough because I did most of the work on Bristol afterward. Oh. Favorite poster artist. I do love DKNG, kind of consistently, just as like a group. Um, Forefathers are also really good. Granted, they do a lot of like branding stuff as well. <clears throat> um, and then this is like. You got it. Okay, it's cool. Good. The beginning of kind of what we're gonna get into Whoa. of just like very abstract, exploding, weird shapes. Um, That's so cool. I'm also very much into metal, but I'm not into like gory metal because this still feels cartoony and more like street art or something. Yeah, I've seen, I forgot what street artist it is, but it's like on um, Dino 1AM. No, in San Francisco? Yeah, it's this place, this street art place. <laughs> Got oh, where it's like designated for people to do it, so they're not. They arrested. do like classes. It's kind of like a art gallery slash street cool. art graffiti educational place. Yeah, it's and across the street they have this whole mural, and there's this kind of um, this woman's face that's all separated and kind of exploding. Okay, that sounds about that's right. That's what it reminded yeah, me. Yeah, there's of. another guy I who does who the like. Artist is. Disney characters, and he makes them explode. So it's it kind of like the same him. Banksy kind of It wasn't like a guy from thing. the place. It was like an external okay. guy, but they it were just showing it. It was so disgusting, but also really cool. Yeah. My favorite combo. Yeah. Speaking of Akita, Ooh. also very disgusting and cool. Uh, this was the beginning of Inktober. So for this oh, one, yeah. I ended Someone doing... asked if you participated I in did. Inktober. I only was able to do half of it, or like two-thirds of it because I got backed up with work. Um, but this was the Poison Ivy, which I believe was the first one. And then... Ryan, you're right, it's Nichos. That's the artist. There you go. Thank you. And then this was two and three. I don't remember, I forgot to write down what the themes were, but I can always look up the list. But wow. apparently this one involved Shy Guy getting cut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's kind of like creepy and cute at the same time. I actually just read the Akita manga. I got the whole like hard box set and it is fantastic. Nice. Uh, this tattooed flamingo. <laughs> a Does he have a tattoo of himself? Yeah. Because <laughs> why not? Why not? Steve-O flamingos. <laughs> Hi, Fiorella. Hi, everyone who's joining. Say hi to us and ask any questions you have for Logan. This I'll be reading them. Oh, God. Stabby death coming for you thing. <laughs> also, don't remember what this one was, what the theme was, but could turn into a cool poster, I guess. Yeah. So these all end up turning into like potential concepts when like the day of, it's like, I'll spend an hour making a thing. Oh, maybe this could become a longer term, better thing. Yeah, it really helps to have all this material to use. 
Hi, Paul. So for the the shading, I'll, I did all this with a brush. And so it's just brush and then using water with the ink to like water it down into these like gray kind of shading. But all the lines like up here are just like brush lines. Yeah, that water trick, I need to try that out. Hi, Krishna and Jeff. And here's a Game of Thrones one. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it's Littlefinger and um, Sansa. Sansa. Yep. And it was Ooh. like just around the time that the whole situation in the show was happening. Yeah. So very fitting. Nice. Um, and that's, oh wait, nope. I was running robot. Whoa. <laughs> I love that. Which was very Iron Giant inspired because that yeah. movie's still rad. Adebola asked what inspires your sketches? Um, well, for Inktober, it's like you have the one word and then from that one word, you sort of have to just, yeah, Iron Giant. Um, you have to do like something that fits the theme, but I also don't want to spend more than like five to 10 minutes thinking of the concept. So it's like, what three initial things spark when I see this word? Mm -hmm. And then I'll just have to run with one of them, um, which is not how I would necessarily deal with like a client project where I just sit on it for hours and then be like, oh, I found out what it is three hours in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for these, it's like, I think a lot of it comes from subjects outside of this where it's like Poison Ivy or Shy Guy or something where it's like, I already know the thing and I love the thing, so how can I manipulate the thing? Because it's easy to pull from that. But also I apparently called this guy, his name is Gender Neutral Robot. That's what <laughs> I called name. this piece. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, um, let's do. And then is that's that the it? end. Yeah. Okay. So oh, there's this, one last one. In the it's very so back. It's so cute. Oh, I also have this cat. We have okay. to show that. This is this isn't what I said was no. cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is gross. The gross cat. I don't remember why this cat wanted honey so bad. Ooh. <laughs> but. <laughs> um, Weird. This was the. That's the cute one. Yeah. People love cactuses. Especially when they're having balloons. like character. Yeah. I drew this cactus like for a Christmas card and people were obsessed with it. And I'm like, it doesn't really it's not doing anything. Do you have a star on his head? No. Just like um lights going around. But it's it just like looks Charlie cute because it's like, hi. <laughs> I think it all comes from like Cactuar. Oh, that weird maybe. character from Final Fantasy is always in the weird like running position. I have to write that down. You have so much knowledge. Of stupid of nerd things. Of nerd things. Okay, so oh. this is what we're gonna do today. Is everyone excited? It's an exploding toaster. <laughs> okay? I want everyone to know that. <laughs> it's, if it's not this clear. This is what we're doing. Um, so I want you to show how you would start something like this. Would you go on your iPad? Um, yeah, so. This particular kind of piece, I've been doing a series of these things which are um, very focused on risograph 8.5 by 11 dimensions. Mm -hmm. So I started by doing some fruits and I did some vegetables and now I'm getting into inanimate objects with foods. So like the thing that's used to help do whatever with that food. Yeah. And so this is the first one I'm doing of it, but after this I'm going to go do a risograph print of it. So then tomorrow I'll have that to show also. Cool. Um, because I love taking digital to print, because I still love the print world, so I always see something as digital helping that. So it's poster, book, prints, pins, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Eventually get a physical object out of it. Um, so let's plug this in. Yeah, it should be charged now. Yeah, I'll just put mm -hmm. it in there. So I wanna say hi to everyone who's joining. Hi, Amara. Hi, Danielle and Terrence. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Marie. It works. Marie asked, there was something at the back of your sketchbook. Oh, the is little that, purple thing? Is that something? It's not something I did, but I went, I took the sketchbook to Oh, when you were Japan. in Japan. So all the, a lot of places you go to in Japan, especially Tokyo, just have these print things. Like, yeah. it's just a wood block that you can dip in the ink and like put. So. This sketchbook, I'm just doing this one for the towers, because at the top of it they had it before the elevator. So, yeah, it's the government building in Tokyo, 
It looks so cool. Like, can yeah. you imagine a government building here having something that cool? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a beautiful building too. Um, but I think if you went to uh, Skyline, I think that's the name of the Seattle kind of tower that's mm -hmm. there. They also have one, but. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, so the sketchbook's been to Japan. It's been everywhere. <laughs> okay. Let's go to your iPad. Yeah, so typically now I'll do these sketches in the iPad and then send it to Photoshop, do any sort of final touches. And then I've worked both in Photoshop for the final or done Illustrator. Let's Turn it. do this so oh, we can right. see you doing it. All the things. Um, you can put it down. I'll manipulate Just the GoPro. Whatever that was. So that we can get a good view of you. Okay. Hi, Jade. Thanks for joining. Hi, Pamela. It's your first time. We're so happy to have you. We're just fixing this so that you guys can get a good view of what's going on. Okay, so if you're just joining, Logan is showing us how he would start um, an illustration on the iPad. We're on Sketch right now, and he's going to be using the Pencil tool. Which? Okay. Well, and the Pencil. Apple yeah. Pencil and Sketch Pencil. Yeah. Which I think yesterday was mentioned like the Sketch Pencil on the iPad's really awesome. Yeah. So the fact that it is so awesome allows me to kind of do this when I'm on the move and then just send it to myself to finish later instead of relying on coming up with an idea, writing it down, getting home, and then doing it. Mm hmm Roland says he has a ton of those stamps, like the awesome. one you have at the back. Where from? Like how many from different areas there? Yeah, are they all from Japan? Or do other places have stamps too? <laughs> we need to find where all the stamps are. Whoa, okay, so this is like an eye coming out yeah. or something? So this is kind of reminiscent of ones I already did. So you start with really low flow. Yeah, I'm not detailed at all on something like this. Yeah. Denise asked, what can you advise us to develop our creative thinking? What practice has helped you the most? Uh, for coming up with ideas, it's I think a lot of it comes from just consuming content. So I read a lot of comics. I read a lot of manga. I play a lot of games. Um, I love nature, and I just observe a lot of stuff around that. But growing up also, I just watched a lot of like Nickelodeon cartoons and Me too. old TV and like movies that were goofy 80s movies and stuff so like back when practical effects were top tier so yeah. like a lot of that's just kind of come into my mind and been consumed so now i'm just like puking it back out through drawing <laughs> um but yeah that i think it's just kind of like adapting what stuff you love into because then there's also people who just do like beautiful nature drawings and I love those, so it's like that's how they want to mm -hmm. utilize their creativity, but it's like pulling from nature and then composing it in a way that I find amazing. Like Tegan White does a fantastic job with that stuff. Writing that down. Yeah, her Instagram is fantastic. I'm always looking for more people on Instagram to inspire me. It's good for that. Hi, everyone who's joining. We are live. We have Fiorella from Peru. And we have Perena, Perena from India. Hi, Kendall. Um, she's asking, do I spy some Alex Party inspiration in your work? Maybe. I don't even know who that is. Oh. Or I do know and I don't know the name. Yeah, maybe we need to check What's that out. What's it from? Is this an artist that creates similar kind of explosion things? Um, and she said, have you mentioned your Paxton Gate show? I have not, but yeah, I have a show up at Paxton Gate in San Francisco that's a lot of exploding animal-based acrylic paintings, and that'll be up for the rest of March. Um, cool. So yeah, if anyone's in the area and wants to check it out, it's Paxton Gate Kids, which is the child version of the adult. We have skeletons and plants primarily to like, we have a lot of cool science and yeah. anatomy toys. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really cool store. It's in the Mission. I love those stores. I have to come check it out. It's pretty good. 
Leonardo from Brazil says your job is amazing. <laughs> You're doing Thanks. an amazing job. I mean, job could also be amazing. <laughs> so for those of you who are joining now, um, Logan is showing us how he would start an illustration on Adobe Sketch. And he's using the Apple Pencil and the Pencil Tool on Sketch. And this is in his signature style that he's created of kind of a whimsical yet gross, <laughs> funny, weird, exploding object. And his final project for today is going to be an exploding toaster with bread in it because I know that's what you wanted to see today. Um, it's what I always imagine when making toast. Yeah, you might not have thought you wanted to see that, but when you see it, you'll be like, this is amazing. So this is how he would start. He starts out really light with the pencil tool. And as you could see, if you were here earlier for his sketchbook, he does a lot of pencil drawings where he just builds up all over and he doesn't have to erase, he just does rough sketches because then he can bring it into Illustrator, for example, and refine. Um, Jimmy says, do you have any sketch tutorials that you've seen that you would recommend? Um, I don't know the names of them necessarily, but a lot of like Disney artists from way back when have really good sketch videos. One of them is the team that worked on like Sleeping Beauty around that time just went out and drew from nature. Oh, and that stuff's like that's crazy cool. cool. Is but that it's a on lot YouTube? of like it was. I don't know if it oh, still is. That's but cool. it's a it's a bunch of dudes in like nice suits with beards and like sun hats <laughs> just outside like killing it with acrylics and like pencils. Whoa. Um because apparently you had to dress up really nice and now that is Nobody not the does case. That yeah. Anymore. Um yeah, stuff like that's really good. I don't, I haven't watched a lot in a long time, but a lot of comic artists have some really good like time lapse sketches mm -hmm. that are pretty good. Yeah, so more of like analog sketching. Um, Gregory says, hi from Nashville. I have your Steve exploding poster hanging above my desk right now. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Why, thank you. Steve was uh, actually inspired by this dead rat <laughs> that was oh. like in the, so when I was at Delicious in Chicago, we had this concrete area where a building had been torn down. And so we used the screen printing ink to draw a goal on one of the brick walls. And we just turned it into a soccer field, which is not fun to fall <laughs> on. But there was like one day we came out and there's just this like extremely splatted, like cartoon style rat. And so anytime the ball would like roll out of bounds. Like a real one? Yeah, we would just be like, Steve, and be like super upset with him. And so every I time I went back for like rats. a month, I can't he was just deal there. With it. So that's Steve. Um, Have you heard of Will Terrell? Irum asks. He also has a YouTube channel. That sounds familiar. A lot of times you you would recognize the art, but you don't remember the name, which is it's hard to remember everyone's name. But yeah, we'll check that out. Yeah, there's like Gary Baseman, who's kind of a good go-to influence regarding this kind of like wacky eye thing um, who did the original or the more recent cranium where it's all okay. the weird like red and blue characters with like yeah the weird eyes Mohammed says you're just amazing thanks Mohammed Milan says do you sketch all the time before doing an illustration yeah I always do some form of sketch prior to doing the full illustration and in this case, the sketch could just turn into the thing I work on because digitally you can just carry it over. Mm -hmm. So at least you have that thumbnail that you can, because this you can just like, stretch it out and make it however big you want because the detail doesn't matter, but you still have the general layout. Yeah. So we're using Adobe Sketch right now. It is free. Um, it's We're on the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil right now using the Pencil tool. And well, so what's going on? Is that like a cross section of a body inside? Yeah, so this would be like a, a bone in the middle. Well, this would be like a grapefruit essentially. Oh, a grapefruit. Yeah. So if the grapefruit was okay. cut in half, but exactly. had this face. This is exactly what they look like sometimes yeah. when you cut them in half and then they get all like angry at you. It's true. It totally happens. That happens in my stomach because grapefruits <laughs> don't like me. Oh. They're too acidic. Very acidic. So yeah, this is kind of how I imagine a grapefruit. Um, 
But yeah, I would, for a lot of these, since they're symmetrical, I'll just use, I'll cheat, essentially. Oh. And duplicate it. And then flip it there and just drag go. it over so I can see what it would look like. That's so easy. So then when doing the print, the I've already finished both of, of it. technology. It's true. And then go into things that are like, this drool doesn't need to be over on this side. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just on this side. What's your favorite Lord of the Rings character? Hmm. Francis wants to know. <laughs> I'll tell you the next thing. Okay. You don't have to read it. <laughs> I mean. Okay, you can think about that. I'll remember. Gregory it's probably says, Sam. Sam. Yeah. yeah. He kind of got the ring there. Yeah. <laughs> I met you, Gregory, I met you back at TopCon in Chattanooga three years ago, and you cut me a deal as long as I sent you something of mine, and I just remember I never did that. Whoops. You can absolutely do it. <laughs> you can still do it. Yeah. I would love to give feedback, or just make new design connection friends. Yeah, Gregory, you still have a chance, it's not too late. Andrew, I love grapefruit, but I feel you with acidic problems. <laughs> yeah, it's a... My girlfriend's favorite fruit and maybe food, so she'll always get it, and then every once in a great while I'll try it and be like, nope, still no. Her favorite fruit? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's so bitter. I know. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Hi, Ibrahim. Let us know if you're joining right now. We're on Sketch using the Apple Pencil, and um, we do have a challenge like we do every day. So today the challenge is to create a Lunar New Year postcard. And we have a template ready for you if you just click on the challenge tab. And we're gonna be reviewing those submissions throughout the stream. In the, in the next half hour, I'm gonna show the ones we've already received. And I really encourage you to submit so that Logan can see them and pick his favorite and give you feedback. It's great to just have you know, Logan right here you have the opportunity to send in something and see what he can tell you to improve. Or if he thinks it's great, if it's the one we pick, you get to win. So, yay. yay. So this is a kind of how I do a quick value test of, this is in the case of doing a risograph print because I'll just make a black and white version on this and then go over this with like refined ink lines and then kind of do like a better version of whatever the second tone is. But it's kind of thinking in a screen printing format where mm -hmm. with risograph you're going to have two inks and they're going to blend differently so if I have this line in my mind is blue and then this kind of like gray is going to be the pink I'll know the pink's going to go down first and the blue's going to go on top and so just kind of planning for that mm -hmm. ahead of time um, but this would be like the level of sketch I would do and then to make a print of this how would you print the two different colors do you have to separate the layers and put one layer through first? Yeah, so the way a risograph usually is, it's kind of like a fancy printer fax machine kind of thing. So you have a giant cartridge of ink that's about yay long and like a cylinder this round. And it's almost like the thing in ghost buses that they have to like remove in the basement. <laughs> so it has like this clicking sound as if you're ejecting a cartridge. And so you take whatever ink you want to use then, put it in, and then you have to take the printed out version of just the black, scan it on the top of the bed, and then that'll create a master copy, which basically does an emulsion burn Whoa. kind of process to the wheel. So then once that's like good to go, you put a stack of paper you want to print on into the bed and say like, print 50, and then it shoot out all 50. But risograph ink never totally dries, so like there's not really a need to wait for it. It's just gonna kind of get messy every once in a while. But then you'd have to remove that cartridge afterward, put the new one in, say the blue, oh, okay. and then go through that process again. But once you get it down, it takes like 15 minutes. And yeah. you can have 50 prints done. That's which awesome. Which is super awesome. But the first time I tried using it, I like jammed it by accident and then like panicked. Uh, and then realized I just like, it's a really finicky machine that's from like the 80s in Japan. Yeah. So it's very like, if you break it, it's gonna be really expensive too. Okay, drink break. Hydrate with coffee. <laughs> <clears throat> Matt says, what up, Logan? Hey, Matt. I know you, too. <clears throat> um, 
so a lot of people are asking about the challenge. We are open until for the next almost hour. So you have about 50 minutes to submit for the challenge. And we'll be reviewing some of those soon. So this is the process that Logan starts out with. Um, he's just roughly sketching, and with the power of technology, he was able to just duplicate and flip half of the grapefruit. If you're just joining now, this is an exploding grapefruit. And he's just showing us what the process he goes through. A lot of you are asking questions and telling us where you're from. Please keep doing that. We love to hear all of your questions. And um, if I missed one of them, you can ask again because we had a lot there in the last few minutes. So I'm trying my best to get them all to Logan so he can let you know his opinions. Um, Alexander says, can you draw Katana? Like the character I guess. from DC? Or have you? Or the weapon. So, as you may have noticed since yesterday, I'm not knowledgeable about comics. So I don't know anything. I just say what I say. <laughs> it's interesting that... Or do you <coughs> like that character? I know the character, and I actually have... <clears throat> there's like a whole series of DC bombshell statues that they made of various DC female characters that are like, what if they were done in like an old 50s pinup style? And I have a lot of those because it's like the one cool, not just like it's the cover in a statue form, but like someone yeah. did it for a purpose that's unlike what the comics typically were. But they made a cool katana one. She's also holding a katana. So yeah. Like um, but yeah, she was in like the Suicide Squad group. Granted, that movie is not my favorite by far, but I yeah. Try. Um, <laughs> the brush I typically use for inking is not here, but it is a Kyle brush. So it's interesting to like try out these brushes having gotten so used to. Oh yeah. The ones I usually use. Oh, Alexander says that was a joke. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> and then I just went so in depth with it. We went in depth. Um, how do you pull up here. the on-screen menus? On Sketch? Yeah. Yeah, so the interface of Sketch can be kind of whack because there's also like gestures that you don't know about, like swiping to the left will undo, mm -hmm. which it doesn't really say anywhere. Um, <clears throat> but if you end up tapping on any of these circles, you can then get this kind of like color picker or the so flow. So that was the themes, but if you just want regular colors, if you click on that again, yeah. you can go to the picker Picker, yeah. yeah. And then you just have the whole color wheel. And then size-wise, you can just drag up and down. Yeah. Hitting the brush, you go back to the list of brushes. So similar to Photoshop, at the top, you do have an add option, and you can import, which is what I did on my personal iPad, was just the list of brushes that I collected from the internet, have saved, and then brought into Sketch, and they have mm -hmm. like all the textures that I would want. The ones that are prepackaged are really good, but they don't have quite the like tooth and dynamic that I would want for capturing what I can do in Photoshop. So in this case, this line's like, thicker than I would normally do and a little more transparent, but it still works really well. It's just. Okay, from Roland, are you planning to finish this drawing in Illustrator or Photoshop? If in Illustrator, why do you prefer Sketch instead of Draw? So, yes, usually I would Sketch in uh, Sketch because like, <laughs> It's, again, like yesterday, just way looser for me because it reminds me more of pencil sketching when sketching and draw is very complete. Like, as soon as you make a mark, it just creates a clean line. Hmm. And I just want to get a loose idea down. Um, I'm not totally sure of the marks I want to make yet. Yeah. So I like sense. using Sketch for kind of like finalizing a thing if I'm going to do a tiny print or draw, um, and sketch I'll pretty much use for any sort of brainstorming process. Because it does go right into Photoshop, which I can just bring into Illustrator no problem. Because then also, the usually most of my Illustrator work, I'll use a preset line width. I don't really draw in mm -hmm. Illustrator. Uh, a lot of the stuff's going to be like vector logo stuff, typography, icons, things that are going to be not as free-flowing. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Unless you're doing like a hand-drawn type, then bring that in and then 
vectorize it. But do you like Ren and Stimpy? I do like Ren and Stimpy. Was that mentioned? Yes, yeah. Simone asked. <laughs> it's like Ariel Monsters, Rocco's Modern Life, Ren and Stimpy, Spongebob. All okay, those things so the Hannah acrylic. asked, is there an animated TV series with an animation style that you particularly admire? Oh, so, those. And is then, that a different answer? Well, okay. those for sure, but then like all old Nickelodeon cartoons I love. Like they're kind of gnarly, the music's weird. Yeah. Um, everyone's sweating for some reason. <laughs> Like the wild thornberries are just like the weirdest. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's awesome. So um, weird. So those, and then like Samurai Jack, Powerpuff Girls, that whole grouping of work is awesome. So that's usually my go-to's, and like the mm -hmm. Batman animated series. Yeah. From way back when, the Paul Dini Bruce Tim one, which are still my favorite character designs for Batman. Anything. Any current cartoons you enjoy? Uh, I like Bob's Burgers. That's Rick and a Morty. great one. Um, those are kind of the only two I've watched yeah. recently. I have like a list of things I should be watching, but I'm so behind on that stuff. Because yeah. when I get free time, I'll end up playing a game or something. So Also, like, you do you listen to things while you draw? Yeah. Because like you can't watch something while you're drawing. So. Yeah, I'll, like last night when working, I just had the Netflix fireplace on. Yeah. <laughs> while I had music going. Um, or I'll listen to a lot of podcasts, so like, Adventure Time is good. Oh, yeah. And then, similarly... Nice one, Maria. The podcast Adventure Zone is really great, which is just the McElroy brothers playing D&D, &D, which is a great pastime yeah. as a background. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's so, like the sketching portion. We're going to move from the sketch to the laptop, <clears throat> and um, this is a sketch that Logan has already worked on, and we're an illustrator right now. Um, everyone keeps talking about Ren and Stimpy and the <laughs> eyes, and also about my shirt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just whack. so you see, it's not always moire. It's only moire when I'm small. Super tiny. <laughs> but also, like, the back of the chair kind of is moire. Oh, yeah, the so back of the chair. So you just have this combo. There's too much going on. But I will keep dancing to give you the effect. Okay, Whoa. so let's look at the illustrator on the... Uh, computer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the exploding toaster. Mm -hmm. Which, stylistically, very similar. Yeah. Um, so if I'm doing the risograph, I would take the drawing I just did, keep it as two layers with those two tones, and be done with it. But if I'm doing like a full color thing, which I'll do with this, it'll be way more complex, and I'll just go into details. But I'd still do like the copy paste because. Mm -hmm. Digital life saves time. So totally. I would just open this up from Photoshop, have it right here. The Illustrator pillow that everyone loves. There's going to be a giveaway soon. Who's excited? Say in the chat. OK. So what's your next step with this? So similar to the comic drawing stuff, I'll end up just kicking this down a whole lot much like a sketch because I don't want to be distracted by it, but I still want it for reference. Mm -hmm. 15 is usually pretty good. And then just start a new layer and start doing the line work, which is tedious, but it'll look good. Yeah. Shannon, you didn't miss much. Um, we went from the iPad to Illustrator to show you a sketch that Logan has already worked on, and now he's going to go into Illustrator, refine it using vectors, and add color, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a giveaway soon that we're giving away the Illustrator pillow. I'll let you know when it's starting so that you can be oh, uh, active in the chat. And um, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. OK, I keep holding it upside down and keep asking your questions. Make sure you look up at the challenge tab at the top of your chat dialogue. We have a new challenge for you today and it is a Lunar New Year card. You have a lot of freedom with what illustration you want to include on it, how you want to customize it, but all we ask is that you use that template. And we'll be looking at those submissions throughout the stream. Um, 
let's say right after the giveaway, I'll look at a few of the first submissions and I can't wait to see them. Logan will give you his feedback as well. Mm -hmm. The submissions are due in the next 40 minutes. So half an hour before we end the stream, we are going to stop taking submissions for this stream, but you can always submit for the next stream and Kirk, Wallace and Kathleen will be looking at them as well. So this challenge will go on for the full day. Awesome. Alexandra, why is it such a small pillow? You know what? <laughs> if you don't want to win it, it's fine. You don't have to win. It's very cute. Why wouldn't you want it to be so cute and small? Um, <laughs> Jose says, I love how Logan can come up with such interesting creatures and concepts. Thanks. Where does uh, anyone else get inspiration from? Yeah, let us know. Because you have to consume content to be able to produce content. Very true. Hi, Natalia, Shannon, Anaga, Irum asks about the stickers on the laptop. We showed them yesterday. Um, we don't have to go into detail right now, maybe towards the end, we'll show yep. them again. If we have more interest from people that didn't see the stickers yesterday, let us know. Does anyone else collect stickers? Yeah, so what is your inspiration and do you collect stickers? And are you scared to put them on your laptop because I was for a long time and then I just stopped caring? <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, let's see what people come. Phoenix says, my inspiration comes from streams like this. Awesome. Gregory says, I'm a huge fan of Mondo, and particularly I really love Matt Taylor and Matthew Woodson, who goes by Ghost Co. They're both great. He also asked earlier if you would ever make enamel pins. I am, actually. <gasps> so I'm going to be making more because I want to make enamel pins out of these, particularly, like the fruits and such. Yeah. Um, which also opens up the opportunity to have like two separate pins where they're being split apart and you could have them next to each other. Yes, that'd be so um, cool. What about cufflinks? That would also be awesome. So pins Business and things. Business idea. Yeah, with the physicality of things. Um, right now I'm getting pins printed in collaboration with uh, my comic shop that I go to in Oakland, which are the Justice League, which is basically just rat fink gross versions of all the DC characters from the Justice League. Is this shop on Piedmont Avenue? It's in your Telegraph, Cape and Cowl. Okay, it's um, a different one. But the guy there, Eton, <clears throat> I've just befriended and been on his podcast and whatnot, but he's a huge DC geek and I'm a huge Marvel geek. So we end up just battling it out, saying like, yeah. your side's stupid and then That's hugging funny. me. So <laughs> it doesn't, re <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, we wanted to do like a pin collaboration. And so I ended up making those and they're out to print now. So hopefully by the end of the month, those will all be good to go. Okay, we have a lot of questions. Oh, Ian boy. Pointer is back for his second day. I remember you, Ian. He asked, um, "Does it, have you drawn a lot of animals? He finds that it helps to practice creating expressive characters by drawing animals. Yeah, totally. Um, I haven't drawn a lot of animals from nature recently, um, but for instance, the gallery show I just did for Paxton Gate is entirely animal based. Granted, they're exploding, but like I still would look at animals as reference. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of tried making the pieces the size of the animal as needed. So like if it's a bear or a shark, it would be an 18 by 24 piece. But if it's like a blue jay, it's 9 by 12. So they would scalably kind of fit yeah. the animal proportion. Um, oh. Yeah, it's what kind of animals, because some animals are frustrating to draw. But <laughs> yeah. what are some animals that people like? drawing or like seeing drawn. Yeah. Also, Tegan White is a great animal drawer. Okay, next question. Fiorella says, isn't it an option to just export this to vectors automatically? Why do you have to draw it again? Yeah, you can do that if you want the kind of like gnarly line. That would mean kind of making a clean drawing from here, which I've done before. This is kind of just going through the process of doing the more refined line, which I've done for more of the vector work. Because if I'm going to go vector, I like it being really clean. And if I'm going for Photoshop, I'm just going to embrace the messy kind of like painterly feel. Yeah. So stylistically, it's kind of showcasing to like my sketch style is one way, but if I need to do a really clean thing for a client, but want to retain my kind of like characters, 
I can mm -hmm. also do it in a certain way. But for the risographs, I totally do the kind of gnarly line drawn version. <laughs> Are you using your trackpad and not a mouse? I am. Wow. And that is just from doing it a lot <laughs> and like sitting on couches and stuff and not wanting to have like a keyboard or anything. Ergonomics so, are not your focus. Do what? Ergonomics. No. Um, like even when I have the laptop and a Thunderbolt display, I'll just plug that in and not use a keyboard and mouse. Yeah. But if I'm doing like multiple screens and I'm doing like sketch program or something or XD, then I probably will utilize those things. But just for this, it's very at home to be on a couch and just doing this. So we had some answers about animals people like to draw. Foxes, otters, narwhals, tigers, deer, and fish. Nice. And Shannon asked if you ever draw dragons. I've not drawn a dragon in a very long time, but I used to when I was a kid um, in high school and such. But yeah, I, I would love to draw a dragon. That would have been like maybe the next series is mythical creatures. Mm, exploding mythical creatures. Yeah. If you were to decide to draw a dragon, where would you get your reference from, since it's not real? Mm. I mean, should I say that it's oh not no, real? Oh no, Santa Claus. Are people going to um, be upset? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Harry Potter dragon's pretty good, but also Game of Thrones dragons are pretty good. But I'd want to do a dragon that's like, more how to train your dragon style because I like whimsical, cartoony like dragons more. Yeah. So like a toothless kind of dragon with expressive eyes and such. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. Hi, Adebola. He's asking what your best animal character is. What's one of the ones you did for the Paxton Gate show? So my favorite one I did for it was a snake mm. um, because you get to like chop the snake up in a whole lot of ways and have it like have pieces flying everywhere and like yeah. the scales are a really cool pattern to work with. I really like the blue jay I did and uh, this armadillo because it has like the shell kind of popping. Oh. Um, yeah, I kind of, I went through a list and like broke down what ones I wanted to tackle and they pretty much all turned out to be weird. So like I want shark, but I want a hammerhead shark because it's awkward or like I want a lizard of some sort, but chameleons have weird eyes, so like I'll go with that one. Yeah. Um, so it was always kind of based on like what's the odd version of the kind of shape I want to make. So I did another flamingo, but it's not tattooed, but it is colored. Um, yeah, I, I like wacky animals. So thus the narwhal and dragons are definitely in that realm. Yeah. Caroline says, I like drawing seahorses. They're like tiny dragons. That's they are true. Like tiny That's dragons. a good There's idea. also that seahorse that is, what is it, dragon something? There's one that is like, Oh, it's called it literally a has a something. dragon in the name. And those are pretty cool. So um, there was a couple questions about your keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. If you're using one, maybe try to call it out so that people can see what you're doing. Sure. Um, so... As you move along, yeah, just I'll, keep that in mind. I'll keep it in mind. Because everyone wants to know your secrets. Absolutely. I have so many secrets. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Grace. I mean, basically flipping between the tools is my primary action. So going from like A to just being able to select stuff to V where it's more just dragging. Okay. Is a huge thing of mine. Or doing So a, you hold down A while you click. Well you just tap A and then it'll let you go into the mode of being able to like grab a point. Right. Um, okay. The different um like arrows. shift is crucial to keep the proportions. So holding shift. Holding with shift is a major key. Literal. <laughs> so um a room I saw your question about the wrist. Yesterday we talked about your wrist and how you sometimes wear a wrist support because mm -hmm. you get a little pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of inevitable for anyone who's doing this kind of stuff. 
especially if you're like on the couch not use, not caring about ergonomics, you're gonna yeah, have Yeah, totally. Problem. I mean, but hopefully I've done it's it to not myself. too bad. Yeah, doing a lot of comic stuff too is just in general, because you're pumping out so much work. Yeah. That it tends to do it, <laughs> um, just inevitably. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just have a wrist brace I'll wear when I can, slash remember to. Much like brushing your teeth, I'll forget right. sometimes. Hi, Ugliessa, you're not late. Actually, you're just in time because we're about to do a giveaway. And we're just starting to, we're an illustrator vectorizing an illustration that Logan has worked on and it's an exploding toaster. Okay, guys, it's time for the giveaway for this amazing illustrator pillow. Who's excited? Okay, so all you have to do is be active in the chat. Why don't you just tell us your favorite mythical creature to draw? So either say pillow, which a lot of you are saying, a mythical creature, say Logan is awesome. That's pillow. all you have to do, and we will randomly pick one of I you to win the pillow. I could be a mythical creature. Yes. What kind of mythical creature do you think Logan could be? That's another know. thing. You that's, a good, that's a good follow-up of superhero name. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, yesterday you were a superhero. Okay, Medusa, mermaids. Ooh. I'm actually doing a Medusa piece for fun now. Ooh. Not right at the second, but since I like the snake thing so much, it's a bunch of exploding snakes. Logan is a dragon. Nice. Could we make your name and like put dragon and Logan together? Sure. L Drogan? Drogan? No, I just sound like <laughs> Draco Malfoy or something. Yeah. <laughs> or what's that? Game of Thrones? Dro Drogan? Drogo. Yeah. No. Cal Drogo he is died so long Khaleesi's ago. husband. I know. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> well, now he's Aquaman. Yes. So <laughs> we're fine. Okay, we got a lot of people active. That's great. One of you is going to win. Um, Rachel says, I missed the keyboard shortcut that allowed you to smooth out your pencil line. Was Were you using uh, something for that? No. Um, I'm just choosing to use a three-point stroke for all my pens, or for my vector points. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is, I think, a two? Yeah, so I have a three and a two. But yeah, I'm not not really using the pencil. I, I'll i use the pencil every once in a great while if I'm sketching in Illustrator, but generally mm -hmm. I just use vector points. All right. Someone said, I want to rest my vector head on the <laughs> Illustrator pillow. <laughs> I, I feel so lucky that I get to hold it. And soon it will be gone, so enjoy those I moments. No, I have to give it away. No. A sad life. <laughs> okay, we have a winner. Let's say it together. Uh. The winner is... Rachel, Rachel Lucy Adams. <laughs> I didn't know how fast you were going to move. <laughs> Rachel Lucette Adams. Yay, you won! Congratulations, Rachel. Thanks for watching and being active. Yeah, thanks. And also, the pillow does not dance on its own. No, actually, you have to dance You have to dance make it with dance, it. yeah. That's Congratulations. Part of the whole thing. Yay, oh wow, thanks, guys. Happy to give it to you. Okay, this is being sent to Rachel right now. And there it is. <sighs> okay, so we're making some progress on here. Mm -hmm. So when you change the line stroke, do you have any shortcut for that? Or do you just um, go up there? No, I just go up there. Okay. Um, there are, I have a bunch of brushes or line types that I can play with. Um, that I don't use very often, which are from this ribbon and sponge pack I got, which is pretty cool for when you get into colors anyway. Yeah. That's cool. There it is, floating over here for some reason. <laughs> Shannon loves you. Aw, I love you too, Shannon. <laughs> So these kind of things are real fun, Ooh. but they're really good for like 
the coloring and getting textures out of color. Yeah. Make sure you get rid of that line though, or else you'll have that weird stroke. But yeah, I'll do a lot of layering these to kind of replicate what it looks like in Photoshop when I work. So if I want textures instead of just like smooth gradients all the time, but I'll use some smooth gradients and add textures and some like spatter. And a lot of those things are, you can make yourself or find online for pretty cheap. Mm. Help support the art community a little bit. Do you often come up with backstories to your characters? Do you have some good tips to come up with those stories? Um, I think while I'm working on them, I'll just sort of come to have an idea as to what they might be about. In these cases, I'm not entirely sure about the backstory. With the animals for the gallery show, having them named definitely helped. Mm -hmm. um, because it just adds a level of personality immediately. But I have not named this character. Maybe we if can have a crowdsourcing. To. Yeah. What would you name an exploding toaster? And does the toaster have a separate name from the toast? Oh. Also important question. Yeah. So I'm looking at some of, I'm gonna show some of the challenge submissions in the next minute or so. And we have a few, it's really exciting. So make sure that you check the challenge tab at the top of the chat to see the template that we have ready for you. And Logan and I will be looking at these and picking a winner. If you want Logan to see your submission, make sure that you submit it in the next 20 minutes. So soon. Okay, so we have some names. Burnt Crumbs, Bread the Dead, Chicken and Waffles, Charles and Rhonda, Tim the Toaster, Hot Jam, the toaster name, um, Krusty, ew. Toasty. <laughs> Maria says, yes, toast is crusty and the toaster is Toastmaster 2000. Wow, these are good. Getting the hang of this whole inspiration thing. Yeah. Where does anyone's names come from? As in like, not your personal name, but the names you give your characters or your artwork. Toasty McToaster face. That's like Bodie McBoatface. Steel Tetterton and Peter Wheaton. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> this is amazing. The classiest of toasters. Toast Splode. Krusty Kaboom Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the soldier version of the toast. <laughs> Kathleen Crumb Burglar. That's a good nice. one. Crumple Stiltskin. Oh, that's good. There's something much like naming an animal a human name, adorable about naming something a human name that's like, should not have that name. Yeah. Like this is Greg. No, that's a dog. <laughs> Sir Toastalot. Ex Toasted. Jerry the Toasty. Um, <laughs> Rye, R-Y-E, like okay. the bread. Yep. Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. It all goes back to those puns. It's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. I might I might steal that for the piece if allowed. I'm writing it down so we don't forget. Perfect. Toastest with the mostest. Cal Tosto. Nice. Bringing in the Game of Thrones, Francisco. <laughs> Yizu says, I like Sir Toast a lot. Yeah, that's a good name too. Nathan says, Bob. <laughs> Sometimes the simplest ones are the best. So Batu, if you're just joining now, Logan is working on this exploding toaster illustration that he had made earlier. And now we're in Illustrator, vectorizing it and cleaning it up. And we also want to encourage you all to participate in the challenge. You have 20 minutes left for us to be able to see it in this stream. If you submit it later, Kathleen and Kirk Wallace will be able to look at it. And, and I'll never see it. And he'll never see it. <laughs> I'm opening the latest ones I got. Because I'll be banished back to the nether realm where they don't have art. 
Oh my gosh, I know, that it's very terrible. disappointing. It's so sad. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready to look at a few submissions that mm -hmm. have come in? So let's look at my screen and we have this entry here. So here we've changed the typography, which is great. And I guess there's two people eating. What's this person doing? Oh, paper. Oh, Scissors. cutting. Cutting. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. They're Other cute. ones, dumplings, right? Yeah, making dumplings or eating dumplings and then paper. So what do you think about the character designs? I like it. I think there's maybe some way of being able to show the body somehow, like maybe the shoulders leading into the fact that they're probably kneeling or sitting on a chair. I would mm -hmm. presume kneeling. Yeah. Um, yeah, somehow indicating that there's, we don't necessarily have to see the face, but indicating that there's more below, which is, I mean, this is a tricky angle anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of tough. If it's like a little bit below and then you have it like towards the bottom, maybe you can add a little bit of dimensionality while still being above you. That's a good point. Next, Ahmed. It okay. is year of the dog. Yeah. Last year was chicken. What year are you? A uh, dragon. Of course. <laughs> and guess who else is a dragon? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again. Uh, there we okay, go. Okay. Good one. Yeah. Are you 88? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, we're the same year. Yes. Okay. Best friends forever. So, added. yeah, we're best friends. Oh my god. So excited. So here we have like some, we have the dog as the main thing and then there's some intricate illustrations mm -hmm. around. I like that. Looks nice. This one's cute. <laughs> it's pretty rad. What does this remind me of? Target? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Targe. Yep. Targwa. Okay. People are excited about the dragon thing. I know. I mean, Someone guessed it right. And we were talking about you being a dragon even before we talked about I the I just year. present dragon. That's amazing. How did everyone know? I don't know. Here's another one from Lindsay. So this is like a, a cityscape kind mm -hmm. of thing. Going down the alleyways. Yeah. Those are like the exact kind of colored lights that are there too. Yeah. I like that. So it looks like these are, I don't know, a template or something or copy pasted and. Probably. But they look. They kind of have like a collage cut and paste feel. Yeah. Which could be cool for like the buildings at the bottom could be a kind of pushback version of that too. Or at least like the roofs because they always have that kind of tiled texture that's a nice pattern to work with. Mm hmm Frank, you still have time. We have an, we have another 15 minutes. Here's another dog. Oh, it's like Okami. That's cool. I like all of the, I do a lot of, um, when I'm doodling, I do stuff like this, where all these interlocking mm -hmm. shapes. I think that was like exactly what all my high school notebooks had. It's yeah. just like, I'm listening, but I'm not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Here's a dog with a duck. Oh, it's duck on. Oh, okay. Uh, uh. He got it. He, he, he. <laughs> nice one. Nice. Ooh, that's pretty intricate from Daniel. Yeah. So this is a dragon. Mm -hmm. Well, their dog, dog. is, because those like dogs Oh, outside, the one that like, like dances. Sometimes. Yes. Not the cat that does the. Yeah. If they combine this. the two powers, <laughs> the dragon who's just like. Oh, it's the I'm lion dog. The yeah. lion dog. I don't know why I said dragon again. Who are typically guardians to temples? Yeah. Them. Thanks, Thomas. I'm trying to see your comments while I'm looking at these. Oh, this doggy. Oh, this is almost doing this. Almost. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a. What was that Nintendo game where the dogs would just like jump at the screen? Oh, yeah. What's that Nintendo game, guys? It was a DS game from a while ago, and it was like... It's just called Dogs. Is Kathleen it? Kathleen says, yeah. Okay. Well, that's straightforward. <laughs> oh, wait, Nintendogs. Oh, Nintendogs. Puns again. Okay, everyone's saying it now. Yes, Nintendogs. 
Okay, so that's the last one we have for now. Cool. And at, towards the end, in the next half hour, we're going to look at the last submission. It'd be cool if we just, kind of like when you make uh, those card packs of trading cards where each artist does one card, if this oh. is like a set of napkins. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be pretty Big cool. Big ideas there. Let's go crowdfund it. Okay. Everyone's excited about Nintendogs and Duck Hunt. So we're back to the exploding toaster, doing the line work here. What questions do you have for Logan about his process, about Illustrator? Maybe he has some tips for you. Yeah, or life things to do with design. Happy to answer whatever. Life favorite questions. Favorite sandwich, considering we're making bread things. Oh, what's your favorite sandwich? Tuna melt. Oh, that's good. I always. When I think about it, I think it's weird, and then when I eat it, I think it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, fish and cheese. <laughs> yeah, but then when you think of putting like peanut butter on an apple, you're like, nuts and fruit in a way that's, and then you're like, oh yeah, nuts and fruit is totally just like a granola thing you eat when you hike. Yeah. Not that weird. How did you just make that small line? Did you delete a Bezier point? I didn't see it, but oh, Jimmy, I, just... I mean, Joe is asking, Joel, Joel. Okay, so just go into P, which is the shorthand for going into the, the vector pen. point, pen tool, tapping, and then holding shift so it stays straight, and you can angle it 45 degrees or just straight in any of the directions, mm -hmm. and then clicking down, it'll just create that line immediately, and you can do that again for going down this way with the little pink line that shows that you've lined up, so you can easily make symmetrical kind of shapes. Yeah. Do you ever use the shape builder tool? Uh, sometimes, yeah. It's I'll use it for creating like the beginning of a circle oftentimes and then kind mm -hmm. of breaking that down so I don't have to create a circle. Um, and sometimes for squares, but it's usually a way to like help create the thing that I'm already drawing. Yeah. Um, as opposed to creating something out of it from scratch. Frank, I got your submission. Uh, we'll look at it soon. Mm, what's the biggest commission you've got from a drawing? Um, or maybe you can talk about the nature of the project rather than... Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest piece is probably an acrylic painting of Spider-Man that I did for some guy a while ago that was like this. And I just made it into like a giant comic page looking kind of style where he was in the middle with the spider senses going off and then a bunch of panels of things around him with like venom. Whoa. Um, that was probably the f largest and like took a long time. But the one that I sort of remember the most is I did a kill strike with Max Bemis. So Max Bemis commissioned me to do some artwork for his house. So he just has like artwork of mine hanging in his house and he's a musician I like from my emo past, so cool. that's cool. Did you used to have like bangs? Oh yeah. Ooh. I mean, they weren't like this. They were more just like, <laughs> it's in my way because I'm lazy. Yeah. Um, okay, more questions. Nathan asks, are you a fan of the art of dot 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 books? Yeah, it depends on the book. Um, Do you have a favorite? Hmm. I mean, a lot of movie ones where I might not even like the movie, but the book's pretty cool. Like the art of Star Wars books are really rad. Um, but the art of like any Pixar or Disney movie is fantastic. Yeah. Like any animated film where you can see all the character designs is just my favorite go-tos. Um, and then things like shows or manga that don't have a lot of the art they did for promotion or like fan art or things where the Evangelion one's pretty cool, the Akita one's cool, a lot of the Akira Toriyama like Dragon Ball art of because the manga is all just black and white work mm -hmm. and the show's the show, but then this stuff has like full colored stuff Akira did. So nice. I like those a lot. But yeah, I think they're super great for just like referencing different versions of, because the the Akita full hardcover books that they just put out, which is the manga, the first like three pages are full color, 
and the like jacket's all full color and seeing his acrylic works really awesome because the book does not mm -hmm. have any of that. Okay. Um, does creating the illustration in Vector give you a cleaner, crisper printout? Yeah. Doing any of this stuff in Vector will provide the best printout. If I did do it in Photoshop, I would have it at least 300 DPI so that its reproduction is as close as possible. Mm -hmm. Some places ask for 600, but that doesn't matter so much. Where do you find colors for your illustration? Um, I sort of have developed a weird palette over time, which is mostly inspired by like 80s colors. So if you can see over here, a lot of these kind of like poppy, bright swashes yeah. are what I've been using most recently. So it's from a lot of that 80s print material or cartoons mixed with kind of modern indie Photoshop paintings I've found. And it seems like the marketing world has taken this and then gone even like more extreme with it. So stuff like how Dropbox is gone, where it's like, what yeah. if this palette was then even more neon? Which starts getting into things where it's like, visibly it looks nice, but also legibility wise, it might not be the best, um, which is definitely what separates my illustration world from design world is I still think in a very like app centric way of wanting to make sure anyone can access it and you're not like, oh, someone with hard viewing abilities who's like 50 is gonna be incapable yeah. of reading your sign or something. Totally. A lot of people had emo phases in the chat. Perfect. That's funny. What's so everyone's favorite emo bands? Oh yeah. Candace says, Sharpie black fingernails were my jam in high school. Nice. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Uh, yeah, but I still sometimes paint my nails black anyway. Uh, Without Sharpie, with just fingernail real, polish. You've graduated to real nail yeah. polish. Now that I have access to my girlfriend's nail collection, <laughs> I can just do that. Simone, yes, he does like Red and Stimpy. And we have another eight minutes to submit for the challenge. So can't wait to see what you guys send in. I'm just looking back at everything you guys have said. Um, Joel, he does use a Cintiq. He has a Wacom Cintiq 22 inch HD. He was using it yesterday. So if you go it's to next the, to me, yeah, it's right here. If you go to the day one video, you can see him using it. And I'll use that primarily for any drawing work. If I have access to it over the iPad just because yeah. it has more space and I can access it more easily and do the whole tilty thing because I tend to yeah, I, write. I noticed that you tilt it a little yeah bit. because I'll either to get good circles or like curves because one of the things in art school is always like can you do an ellipse because if you can't keep doing them until you can so uh. in that case you can just like turn it this way and be like haha trick the system instead of having to like yeah bend your arm all weird because I also write like if I have an eight and a half by 11 paper document I need to sign, I'll tilt it entirely 90 degrees and then write sideways. I don't know Whoa. when that happened, but. Okay, so we have a lot of bands. Lots of My Chemical Romance. Paramore, Green Day, Linkin Park, Hawthorne Heights, Face to Face, AFI, MCR, Dave Also says, the fact, when we were talking about favorite artists, that the Black Parade album was done by James Jean Oh. who's like one of my favorite artists, who also did all the Fable covers in the comic world, which is a fantastic comic. James Jean, writing it down. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Dave says, my friend started The Used. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Weezer, my best friend was the drum tech for my chem. Awesome. Cool. Does Panic at the Disco count? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was later for I didn't really personally get into Panic at the Disco, but I have no beef with Panic at the Disco. Yeah. Um, Circa Survi? Circa Am Survive. I? Oh, Survive. Okay, yeah. it's misspelled. I'm like, I don't think that's Which somehow word. showed up in Gilmore Girls. 311. There's a lot of crazy guest stars in Gilmore Girls. Like, when I rewatched it, I was like, oh my god, that person is so famous, and I had no idea. Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Senses fail. Okay, okay. Okay, he got it. He what is everyone approves. What is everyone upgraded to? Yeah, what do you listen to now if you don't still listen to this? Um, someone said, I'm old, so in my day they called it goth. Okay, okay. Instead of emo. 
But I feel like that's a parallel thing as well. Well, I mean, South Park has a whole episode where they break down the actual differences in a very, like, the OG goth was Edgar Allan Poe. Whoa. And I do love Edgar Allan Poe, so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> Um, Liam earlier was saying Dropbox is a bit much with the colors. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, controversy around the general choices Dropbox has made during their colors. I, I'm i like okay with their colors. I'm less okay with the typeface. Yeah. Um, but that's just like, I mean, it's illegible. It's just, I don't think it's a great bold typeface. You think typeface. it's illegible? I think it's just harder to read at certain distances, hmm. um, which is hard when you have a lot of people who are using Dropbox as like a primary source for their business files. It's sort of become a platform that's like primarily focused on artists using it to store their files. Yeah, they're trying to away. shift to be more creative. Yeah, but you still have people using Dropbox who are like, I'm a lawyer who needs to save my, what is this? Yeah. So. <laughs> I think I was really shocked, but it's one of those situations where I don't know if I was shocked because it was so different or if it's bad. Because <laughs> like every new logo, there's always backlash or yeah. every new redesign. Basically, so. anytime a logo is like, hey, we're gonna have this whole write up of how we're geniuses, I'm like, meh. But if you just make a logo and you put it out there, I'm like, all right, I'll listen to you. Yeah. Like when Uber did their whole thing and they're like, changing the world. And you're like, no. Yeah, you're not changing Helping the world, the world in a way. Yeah, I always think about the new Airbnb logo when it came out too. I'm like, well, now I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, it's fine. But um, we have a question about a, the Wacom Bamboo tablet. Mm -hmm. Yusuf says, whenever I use it, always makes it harder to work than a mouse. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's because it's the old tablet or just me not used to it? Um, I My girlfriend uses the Wacom Bamboo as her mouse. I personally never got used to it. Um, mm -hmm. I still would use the trackpad or a mouse for any of that stuff. I only use my Wacom Bamboo tablet in order to color stuff in when I was doing comics. So to like yeah. get textures and stuff, because doing that with a mouse and trying to like stand the lines would just be the most painful and frustrating experience. But yeah, if we're doing like design work with it, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I still don't get it, uh, but I know people love it, so. Hi, Hector. He says hi to you, too. Hello. <laughs> like, specifically not him. Hi, Ashur. Yeah, hi, <laughs> Ari. Don't say hi to Logan. Don't talk to him. <laughs> Daniel says it took me about six months to get used to his tablet. Yeah, that sounds... Like, when I got the uh, Cintiq 2, it took me a while. Um, just because your hand's used to, like, a certain feeling against paper or whatever device you're used to. Mm-hmm. I also always use a rounded. That's just sort of a personal preference when it comes to lines, but makes stuff feel a little smoother. Yeah, the good in between when it comes to a bamboo tablet compared to a Cintiq is the companion Cintiq is about the size of the Wacom bamboo tablet, but just gives you the whole like screen functionality. And I would highly recommend trying that stuff out if possible. Yeah. Hi, Reynaldo. He says, huge hug from Brazil. Thanks. I accept the hug and hug back. <laughs> we are giving you a From huge America. Hug. <laughs> Anita says, I have very small hands, so I ended up buying a mini mouse. That's oh so cute. How big is a mini mouse? <laughs> How small is a mini mouse? I mean, probably mouse size if Disney was correct. <laughs> I'm still looking at all the submissions. Thanks, everyone, for sending them in. This is your deadline. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yizu, thanks for sending everyone the characters they should use. Um, Yizu sent in the chat some Chinese characters oh, that cool. people could copy-paste if they wanted to that find the right sweet. thing. Yeah, the right character for dog and New Year and everything. So that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Helping the community. Is 
So then... Yusuf says I'm at work listening. It's I've heard it's very relaxing. I have, the whole Bob Ross thing. Yes. Just Unlike relax. sports commentary, but if you treated art drawing like sports commentary where people are just yelling. And he comes in with yeah. the circle. He duplicated it and he's moving it over. Could be pretty cool. Using the shift key to constrain the size. Make John sure Madden, the artist. <laughs> Boom. Where is he going to go next? <laughs> Leaves to eat a sandwich. <laughs> um, so then after making some of these shapes, I'll end up using white on top to kind of do a knockout where if you select both of them and then go into Pathfinder, which is over on this right hand panel side, the second shape mode, mm -hmm. you can kind of just knock it out, which is super helpful for going oh, into the color later. Yeah. Knock it out. He knocked it out. That's true. Out of the ballpark. Out of the park. I sometimes okay. forget that not everyone I'm knows. I'm getting like, really into the <laughs> character now. <laughs> I mean, keep going with it. They're like, I like forget that certain sports references like deep in the paint or hard in the paint. Right. They're like, paint of what? I'm like, oh, right, basketball. Yeah. The funny thing is that I don't watch sports, so my sports commentator character. Sports ball talk? Is like not based on any but reality. But one of the best things is getting a friend to commentate sports who doesn't watch sports. Oh, yeah. Because it's super entertaining. One time I was watching football and someone had the closed caption on and it was muted and I just wrapped the closed caption of the football without knowing what they were talking about and it was amazing. Nice. Because then like where inflection should come doesn't make sense. <laughs> Hi Jessica. Jessica loves feeling like part of the group However, sad never to get to do the contest. You can still submit something for the next stream. You have a lot of time because this particular challenge is going on all day. So if you submit within the next couple hours, maybe Kathleen and Kirk Wallace can see it. Is it because she's at work? Because if so, yeah, work's not maybe as important. she has other stuff to do, which is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing your work? Yeah, do this work. This is your assignment. Okay. Thomas, can I send more than one? Why don't you pick your best one and send that one? <laughs> Which sounds like <laughs> when talking to a client and having to show the work you have, I oftentimes send one because I don't want them to choose the poopy one. Yeah, don't let us choose the poopy one. Because <laughs> then they'll be like, oh, I really love the blue one. And you're like, we really fixated on this blue for some reason. I can just make the other one blue. Yeah. Sammy asks, how are you going to color everything in? I've struggled with this. With Illustrator specifically? I think so. I think that's what okay. she's saying. Do you have an answer? Oh, I just didn't know if there was gonna be a follow-up answer to the question. Your, and your answer should be, how are you gonna color it in? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll end up making large general shapes. So kind of like how I use Photoshop, I'll make the inside of this toaster one like group, and that will just be colored in fully. And then within that, I'll add textures and colors to kind of give the gradient or any other shades it needs. Um, mm -hmm. We have so many submissions. I'm so excited. So we've closed the submissions for this stream, but you can still submit for Kirk and Kathleen to see it in the next stream. Han Hannah asked, have you ever experienced any big conflicts with clients before? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's inevitably gonna happen probably 30% of the time because just creative differences or the person who's in charge of making decisions on their end is stubborn, just like I'm stubborn. So then you don't just butting heads and having to like choose what battle is actually worth fighting, mm -hmm. what hill to die on. So in those cases, if it gets bad enough after like doing a few compromises and they just get too stubborn about it, we'll end up firing them, which is always fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so fun. 
Yeah, I mean, you get to be the not shitty Donald Trump, essentially. <laughs> You're not firing someone in a, yeah. So you get to like fire a client who's just like pestering you all the time, um, which happened once when we were living with a client. That was Living tough. with a client? It was one of those like, we have a three month span of time where we're just gonna rent out a house and like finish this website. And they ended up just like, becoming too much to live with, so we had to fire them, but then we also, sort of had to awkwardly divorce ourselves from the house. Wow, and like leave and go so camping messy. until the rent was done. <laughs> so we ended up just camping all of California to like avoid Drama. seeing them. <laughs> but, <laughs> yep. Granted, camping is a great alternative. So That's true, you were one with nature. Yeah. Florian asks, what do you think of the live paint tool? It's good. Um, I don't personally use it a whole lot from the way I work. Um, much like I don't use most of the tools over here. I generally know what they do, mm -hmm. but it just didn't fit into my like scheme of working. Yeah. But it has a lot of value. Daniel says, Big Brother Creatives Edition. What happens when you put clients and artists in the same house? <laughs> Man, that's so funny. Which would be an awesome show to watch. I would totally be the commentator on that. Yeah. Big but with brother. the sports talk again. Yeah. <laughs> when you create the line work in Illustrator, do you use the pen tool or use the brush to get the thick and thin line? I just use the pen tool. Um, but you can change the stroke to make it get thinner. Yeah, so, so show that you could just go like, I don't like this really nice unified stroke. I just have to make sure it's rounded there. Um, I'd rather it be one of these strokes. Mm -hmm. um, those aren't too drastic, but in this case, ugh. Whoa, that's kind of cool. Ugh. Ugh. No. Yeah, too much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fun to like play around with that stuff. It oftentimes gets too wacky. These are the ones that I tend to use they take a while to render because they're like complex spattery ones, but for the coloring process. Mm -hmm. But when you try applying it to a line, it just looks like a mess. But sometimes if you end up making the line, applying this and then doing a mask inside it, you can get like a textured pattern on the inside. But things like this aren't too intense. They're just really thick because I'm working not too large. Yeah. But you can kick this down to like, Point five and be okay. Cool. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of options. I tend to like using the brush in Photoshop because, unlike Illustrator, it doesn't determine when the line decides to change its thickness, since it's based on an algorithm they've built specifically for this. Devin says you can use the one below the rotate tool to control that stroke in specific spaces, oh. but he can't remember the name. Of it specifically? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Good tip. Shannon says listening to you makes me work. I've had designers block all day. Awesome. Hopefully this is inspiring. And I'm not the block. <laughs> you can see, you know, someone else's style and Hopefully that inspires you. Yeah, that was one of the hard issues to get past when getting out into like the creative world. Kind of like when yesterday someone asked about the market being saturated is just to not let yourself compare mm -hmm. to anyone because then it just becomes this huge blockade and hindrance as opposed to just allowing them to be their own thing and you to be your own thing and be creatively in different ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think just making sure not to like be too hard on yourself. I still do it. So, I haven't even learned from myself. So, we're gonna start reviewing the submissions in a minute here. Let me just bring that up. Oh, you're starting to color in. Yeah, I mean, we're getting to uh, not having all that much time left, so I'm gonna yeah. Try it out a little Start bit. Start adding here. color. Yeah, so at least the textured kind of. So we, yeah, we have 15 minutes left of this stream. 
And right after this, we have Kathleen and Kirk Wallace. So stay tuned for that. Um, so Brian is asking, how do you create that sponge brush? Uh, the one on the left here? Yeah. Yeah, this one I ended up getting from a pack that was on a like creative marketplace that was just a lot of different sponge brushes, so they'd be different widths, different speckle sizes, mm -hmm. and it just happened to fit well for what I was, I think it was like 10 bucks, and it all went to the one person that made it, so ended up just using that. Also kind of going off of yesterday, any brushes I've really personally made are very goofy. I've taken a picture with Adobe Capture and then turned that into a brush, because you can yeah. take a picture of like a bird and then just replicate that bird so it becomes this weird smear. <laughs> That's um, so cool. But those are super fun. I still don't know if they're necessarily applicable to any client work I've had, mm -hmm. but they're good for just like playing around with technology and seeing how other people might be able to utilize it. Yeah. Do you, so we have a lot of questions about colors. Mm -hmm. So do you pick your colors before the idea or do you have your go-to colors that you like to use? Yeah, so I'll, typically have this kind of palette on the right that's just being pulled from all the different work I've done recently because I'll just yeah. keep it in the clipboard and I'll pull from that. If if I was doing something that was like a poster project, I would already have the two to three colors picked out for screen printing and have those just like on my palette with me and allow myself to only work from that. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was to like pre-plan this a little bit more for like a finished piece, I would have like three colors just below the smear that I would just yeah. look at the whole time. Kind of like a That's palette helpful. on an actual palette. <laughs> um, All right, so can we look at the submissions? If we just go to my laptop real quick. Great. So this is the first one I have open from Steven, I think. Here's this cute, is it a pug? No. A Boston Terrier? A Boston Terrier. My favorite. Look how cute. He's wearing his little tie and his party hat. He's all ready to celebrate Lunar New Year. I love it. Very cute. I like how his eyes are kind of look like focusing at different places, so he looks kind of goofy. Just like a Boston Terrier. <laughs> Is that normal? Yeah. It's like them Frenchies pugs always have this like this thing going on. Yeah. They also do the whole like adorable head tilt because they need to hear better. Yeah. Okay, so that one. Then we have this one here, which is like the profile of the dog. Um, kind of in the moon. Mm -hmm. Looks like a yellow lab or something. Up? Oh yeah, it could be with the lanterns and the flowers. Yeah, people are saying French Bulldog, Boston Terrier, Pug. All the different ideas. I'll try to unplug my computer one time to see if we can sh make sure it shows up your right. Badge. <laughs> now we're seeing Logan's computer. Uh oh. Yeah, we just had a little issue with my laptop. But Logan is now, you got the gradient on that eye. Mm -hmm. I love it. That looks really good. We're gonna fix the laptop issue and we'll see the rest of the submissions. So just to give a, I'll just focus on this eye for now to kind of give an example considering, again, the time situation, but. Yeah. Some so of you're my, outlining it in that color. Ooh. Some of my favorite weird palette choices. <laughs> Jessica asks, is the gradient a mesh or a radial? Uh, this one's just a radial. Okay. Maybe a little more red. So this is like very Ren and Stimpy territory. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially if we end up making these a similar. Yeah. Start getting into this. It's getting interesting. It used to be really bad with color. 
Well, the more um, the more inventive you get, it gets more interesting. Mm -hmm. Hi, Safira. What were you gonna say? Oh, when's the final submission piece? We're gonna do Mary. it as soon as we have. We have our special guest, Michael, <laughs> coming in to be the technical wizard. <laughs> The other type of wizard. <laughs> Technically wizard. Let's see if this works. Oh, it worked! Michael saves the day. Thank you. So here's the next submission that we have. Um, it's a dog. Maybe, maybe he's up against the moon or something. He is the moon. Okay. The moon oh, is made is of the dog. Moon. Okay, so we're gonna do these pretty quickly because we, we got a little setback here. So Logan, if you mm -hmm. could look at these with me. We got that one. This one from Tatsuya. I really like this. That's, there's so much going on and yet the actual shape And it's is a really... French bull or a pit bull? Yeah, it's a bull of you. some form. What kind is it? <laughs> what do you think of this? Oh, we're gonna go to the next one. Oh, here's another lunar dog. He's actually on the moon. He's he isn't the moon himself. Very cool. It's not any astronaut who made it there first. Yeah. The dog. <laughs> the dog made it first. <laughs> Here's a dog eating the moon. Yeah, I like the colors. It's yeah, it's fun. Here's a dog Puppy. coming out of the moon. <laughs> Does this say dog? I forgot Yuzu. Oh, the symbols that were sent. Which symbols you sent over? You sent them so many times. I'm sorry, I didn't see them. Um, next one, a dog. Oh, this one's really cute. It's pretty it's good. It's from Ian. Little salivation going on. Awesome. Here's from Simone. Beautiful flowers. Symmetry. Yeah. Oh, it this one. That <laughs> one we saw already. I had okay. to download it. That was Steven. This one is playing with a little lantern. Cute. This one is. What kind of dog is this? I don't know any. It seems kind of like a mix. A Sheltie of some sort, maybe? Oh, good knowledge. A puppy Sheltie? This Dragon one. dog? Ooh, or the lion dog thing. Where it's like. Or is it Drago? Oh. Is it the actual combo of dog and dragon? Dog and dragon Drago. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Frank's Happy Lunar New Year, Year of the Dog. I like Whoa! It. That's really cool. I love the colors. Yeah. This one, it's like the target dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're so conditioned Like a Dalmatian by target brands. dog. It's true. I mean, this red just screams target, so yeah. all of China is owned by target now. <laughs> this one here. Another Okami reminder, it seems. Mm-hmm. Cool. I like the style of this one. Yeah, Lots very cute. Lots of watercolor cute. brushes. Very nice. And then these are the oh, ones that we the saw beginning. earlier. So we can just review these. How many submissions did we get yesterday compared to today? I think we got twice as many today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Here's the lanterns. The duck hunt. Yep, duck hunt dog. <laughs> and that one. Awesome. So quick review of all the submissions. Year of the <laughs> dog. And then the last one we had was this one. Whoop. Okay, so do you have a winner, Logan? Yeah, go <gasps> through them real quick. Tell me when to stop. It's oh. broken. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> and if this person has won a few times, we might... Um... Okay, go back. I think I know. Back. I know, almost back. Back, back, <laughs> back, back, that one. This one? I like how the colors oh, just unify really well 
with the border and everything. Yeah. Seems very organized. He did a really good job with the character yeah. too. A lot it's of style. Super cute. Lots of style. He did all of those circles coming coming out. Yeah, the radiation kinda. of this dog is so happy yeah. to see you. He's radiating love. Radiating love. Thank you so much, everyone who submitted for the challenge, and congratulations, Ian. Yeah, That's congratulations. Great. You win for your creative clout. Okay, so let's go back huh. to what you were doing real quick so that we sum up. So yeah. today we started out on Sketch showing how Logan uses the pencil tool and just kind of quickly maps things out. And then he went into Illustrator. Don't forget, never forget the pillow. And it will haunt you. <laughs> he vectorized, he's cleaning things up, he's adding color for this exploding toaster. And what are you gonna do with this? You said you might make a print? Oh yeah, so not this specific one, mm -hmm. um, but from, man, it's lagging. This shows how old my laptop is. <laughs> um, yeah, using the kind of sketch, I'm gonna do a version that is meant for the Risograph machine, and I'll do a print of that. So there'll be like this digital coloring kind of version compared to what the Risograph is going to be. And yeah. then I'll bring that tomorrow to kind of show like how the same idea could be tackled in different ways. So I'll probably finish this up too. So I'll have like, here's the color kind of final version that would be for like digital mediums compared yeah. to how I would tackle it in Photoshop, but it's still the same sketch. To finish this one, would you wrote, would you flip it like you did on yeah. the Yeah, so ultimately I just have to finish this left-hand side. Yeah. And I, I again kind of explore most of things when it comes to the color choices or the initial sketch. A lot of the line work's just like busy work that yeah. has to be done. Same with like comic inking. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be nice to kind of conclude those today, bring them tomorrow and be able to show a comparison. Cool. So. We'll be back tomorrow, and what do you have planned for tomorrow to show us? Tomorrow, I'll be working on a bike poster I'm work gonna be making, which will ultimately be screen printed as well. Cool. Um, so I have a kind of initial sketch, but it's a girl who is kind of in a bike position, and there were two options, so I'll kind of showcase both options, but then the one I ended up going with is what I'll be working on. Um, yeah. Great. So we have the next stream, which is Kirk Wallace and Kathleen. So make sure you stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. They're going to be next. And we have so many more um, events happening. We have two more streams after that today. And Logan and I will be back tomorrow. He's going to be creating his bike poster. Mm -hmm. So tune in again. More giveaways, more challenges. So, so much is happening. <sighs> And thank you so much for joining us again. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we will. Yeah, don't yeah. no, I'm not going to bail. <laughs> you better be here tomorrow. Just have be a cardboard tomorrow. cut out of me. And his stickers will be here again tomorrow too. Yep. Maybe we can talk. Maybe about I'll have them. a. I still need a tiny sticker to fit here. So. Yeah. Because that's like the one area that's kind of missing on my laptop sleeve. Oh no! You need to fill it all up. I know. It's very upsetting. So we'll see everyone tomorrow. And Logan's gonna show us his all colored in yep. thing. It's gonna be all finished. And then if there's questions regarding any of that stuff, I can like go into the file and kind of pull it apart too, because it'll all be there already. Okay. So like that'll probably be more to do with layering techniques. So just how I would organize an Illustrator file when it comes to a lot of colors and like radiants and textures. Um, yeah. Because that stuff is a pain to keep track of. So. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. We love you.